Hi, hi everyone. This is Marcel with Ernie Racing News reporting December 21st, 2023. The lead story today, Israel orders evacuation of southern Gaza. Well, you can imagine this could be a problem for the people who've already evacuated the north and central Gaza to the southern camps, to the, the camps where now over 140,000 people in these camps that now have to evacuate from being evacuated. Where are they going to go? Why are they doing The bombing has already forced them here. So anyways, let's read the story. Israeli authorities have ordered the evacuation of the population of the southern Gaza Strip. According to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCA, on December 20th, the Israeli military designated a new area covering about 20% of central and south of Khan Yunus City for immediate evacuation. Here is the website OCHA, United Nations Office for the Coordinated Humanitarian Affairs. So on early on December 20th, Israeli forces reportedly destroyed 56 buildings in Asha Kualia, eastern Gaza City. This is one of multiple incidents resulting in casualties, devastation, or both reported over the past day despite ongoing telecommunications shutdown. So on December 20th, which was yesterday at 9.30, the main telecommunication provider in Gaza announced that all communication services have been shut down due to cuts in the main fiber routes in Khan Yunus. This followed the longest shutdown across the strip between the 14th and 18th of December and a partial resumption at about 10% capacity in southern Gaza. Humanitarian agencies and first responders have warned that telecommunications blackouts jeopardize the already constrained provisions of life-saving assistance. As a result, the Flash Update provides limited update information about the crisis in the, over the last 24 hours. So on December 20th, heavy Israeli bombardments from air, land, and sea continue across Gaza with the most intense shelling reported in Biet, Lienya, and multiple areas in Gaza City North, eastern Can Can Yunus, and the eastern and western areas of Rafah City South. Intense ground operations and fighting between Israeli forces and Palestinian armed groups continue in northern Gaza, Gaza City, the middle area, the Khan Yunus, and in southern Gaza. The firing of rockets by Palestinian armed groups into Israeli also continues. Um, two days ago, on December 19th, at about 17.35, a five-story building, five building was reportedly struck in Aramal neighborhood in Gaza City, resulting in damage to the building. Reportedly, more than 100 people were killed and another 16 people injured. Additionally, 50 people are reported missing under the rubble. Yeah, that would be nuts. So on December 20th, the Ministry of Health, the MOH in Gaza, did not update its casualty figures. The latest reported figures as of December 19th afternoon stood at 19,667 Palestinians who have been killed in Gaza. 19,667. About 70% of those killed are said to be women and children. 70%. Let's do the math. So 70% of 19,667 is 13,766.9. So 13,767 women and children possibly killed. Continuing with the story. As of then, about 52,583 people have been injured, according to the MOH. Many other people are missing, presumably buried under the rubble, waiting for rescue or recovery. Of course, there's no way you could add up how many are dead when there's just tons missing, thousands missing. And on the other side, between 19 and December 20th, two Israeli soldiers were reportedly killed in Gaza. Since the start of the ground operations, 134 soldiers have been killed in Gaza and 740 soldiers have been injured, according to Israeli military. Here is another piece of the puzzle. On December 20th, so it was again yesterday, the UN Human Rights Office issued a statement on reports of an incident on, on the day before that, December 19th, whereby Israeli forces reportedly shot and killed at least 11 Palestinian men and allegedly injured an unconfirmed number of women and children in the Al Awada residential building, also known as the Anna building, in Ar Remel neighborhood, Gaza City. Three related families were sheltering inside this building during the incidents. Initial witness reports circulating through media alleged that the men were separated from the women and children 
and were shot and were then shot and killed in what may amount to a war crime. The details of incident are yet to be verified, of course. So it's suggesting that the men were not with the women and children, and then the women and children were shot, targeted, killed, which was the war crime they're speaking of. So back to the main point of this whole story. So yesterday, the Israeli military designed a new area covering about 20% of central and south Kwan Yunus city for immediate evacuation. The area was marked in an online map published on social media. However, communications, telecommunications have been down over many days of the, in the middle of December and continuing to have problems. So how do you expect people to even see this, I guess? I guess you got to drop pamphlets prior and just tell, I don't know. How do you tell people? Do have some runners. Prior to the onset of hostilities, this area was home to nearly 111 plus thousand people. The area also includes 32 shelters, 32 that accommodated about 141.451 inter, interna, internally displaced persons, 141,000 plus persons, the vast majority of whom were previously displaced from the north. Instructions accompanying the map call residents to move immediately to shelters further south of Khan Yunus. I mean, we're talking of 32 shelters, 141,000 people to just move. That's got to be a huge feat for people that are not trained army marchers with all the equipment. How do you move these people? What equipment's available? Well, on December 20th, 71 trucks carrying supplies entered Gaza through Rafah crossing and 120 trucks entered through the Karam Shalom crossing, including 46 trucks carrying more than 750 metric tons of life-saving food organized by the WFP, the World Food Program, and the Jordan Hashmeet Charity Organization, JHCO. This marks the first time a direct aid convoy enters the Strip through Jordan. This, of course, remains well below the daily average of 500 truckloads, including fuel and private sector goods that entered every day, every working day prior to the October 7th. Well, there's way more news to read, guys, but um, I'm going to move on from that Oka. Um, so, the UN will vote today on a humanitarian resolution to facilitate the flow of aid into Gaza. Where will they send it if the shelters are evacuated, like I just went over? Where do people go? I mean, the UN says that at least 20,000 Palestinians have been killed since the October 7th retaliation by Israel, and that about 70% of those killed are said to be women and children. Yes, we just read that. The US says that peace negotiations are happening right now in Egypt. So here I am on Reuters, Reuters, we all know, <laughs> Reuters fact checkers, they're Reuters bullshitters. But anyways, um, the intensification of fighting comes even as, as diplomatic efforts have been ramped up in the final weeks of the year to starve off humanitarian catastrophe. The sides are discussing a new truce to release some of more than 100 hostages still held by militants who stormed Israeli towns on a killing spree on October 7th. At the same time, the UN Security Council is working on a new plan to ramp up aid. The Hamas leader, Ismail Hayenya, was in Egypt for a second day of negotiations, a rare personal intervention which in the past had signaled important stages in diplomacy. Islamic Jihad, another military group, said its leader was also headed there. The talks appear to be the most serious since a week-long ceasefire collapsed at the start of the month, but the public positions of the opposing sides are far apart. Israel says it will negotiate only on a temporary pause in fighting to free hostages. Hamas says it is interested in only negotiations that will lead to a permanent end to the fighting. Wow, two sides of the coin. Hamas wants a permanent end to the fighting. Israel, no, we just want our hostages, and then we're going to, once we get our hostages, it sounds like we're going to just keep on bombing. Keep on bombing. Keep on bombing. All right, guys, my voice is learning. I'm not feeling so well. I think I'm getting sick. Shit. This is Ernie Racing News, Canadian journalist.